<laughs> Alright, so it's, next, it's been a few days since I last told you guys about the oil leak and um, I got a gasket in from Quadratech and today we're going to try to install it. Hopefully I can get this done. Um, right now it's 2 p.m. Saturday and I have Sunday until Monday when the school comes back and I'll leave my Jeep again. So hopefully this won't be a time crunch and I don't run into any problems. Now me saying that will jinx it. So first we need to go to Harbor Freight to get an oil drain pan and some RTV from Walmart. Just got this oil pan. Holds about 8.5 quarts, so hopefully that, that'll work. Should work just fine. I never used this uh, product, so we'll see how it works. Time to go back to the garage. <laughs> So now you want to take off this dust shield for the transmission. It's right next to the oil pan. And you need to take off seven bolts. One, two, three, four along the bottom. And then one, two, three going straight out vertically. These are all 15 millimeter. So here's the piece that comes off, it's a dust cover. So much oil caked on. Hopefully you guys can see that. So gross. So the seven bolts for the dust cover are all the same length and pitch. So you don't have to worry too much about organizing them. But um, yeah. Now you're gonna be looking at this right here. These two right here. Uh, not, not these two, you don't have to mess with these. But these two up here, so these are nuts, so one, two nuts, and the rest are bolts, all 10 millimeter. So you might need an extension, but start with these two, and then just work your way around until the whole thing comes off. So here are all the pieces. This came off, so it's pretty much the whole oil pan assembly. You have the lower pan right here, and you have the upper pan. And you don't have to take off the uh, the lower portion. You just have to take off the top portion. Comes out with those 16 bolts and two nuts. And then you just kind of want to check. While you're in here, you can check the oil pan for metal fragments or anything. Make sure your engine is in good condition. And then the gasket will stay to the top of the block. And all you gotta do is just pull it off. There's a little bit of RTV holding it in place in four corners. One, two, three, four. And you can just pull it off. Or you can use a, something like a, like a screwdriver or a, something like that. But make sure you don't gash the mating surface. So just be careful. And then, so like I said, there are two nuts that come off around the front that you want to do first, and 16 bolts. And these are all the same size and same pitch, so don't worry about uh, losing where they go. So I just have them all here. I want to make sure to clean these before I put these back in, because they're, they're super oily, as well as the bottom of the engine super oily, which I'll show you guys in a second. Um, so right now, what I'm going to do is clean the bottom of the engine, clean this piece, clean everything down, and then move on to the next steps. Alright, now when you take off the pan, this is what you're looking at here. This is the pickup. This is where the uh, dipstick is. And there's your mating surface. Like I said, the RTV is right here, so you need to scrape this off. Um, 
there's a little bit in this corner, that corner, and as well as that upper corner right there. And here it is. So, as you guys can see, if you look in there, you can, you, I don't know if you guys can actually see it, but you can actually look at the pistons. There's six of them since V6. There's a crankshaft and uh, timing chain. Not much really to look at under here, but um, it's kind of interesting. So you for sure want to clean all this up. So you guys can see that oil has kind of soaked its way up from that surface. And that's kind of why I think it is the gasket. Not 100% sure that the gasket will fix it, but looking at this and where the oil spread to, it, it, it's a good chance it is from this, this upper pan gasket. I have my blade light here so I can show you guys. Sun has set, but um, I, I finished cleaning the surface. Uh, this is what you want to look for, all right? Make sure all those areas are cleaned up. So you just want to make sure the outer layer is clean. Don't worry about this, this, uh, that like brown on the edge. Just looking for the gasket surface to be really clean, and it's pretty clean right now. So now um, I'm gonna get the uh, the gasket and uh, get ready to button all this stuff up. Also, this is pretty clean now. I went ahead and cleaned the whole oil pan. You see, there's a little bit of residual water in there. I'll, I'll dry that up in a second. And um, mostly just working around the edges, making sure not to scar the outside layer. As well as, you know, I, I cleaned up a little bit on the sides too. There's oil everywhere. I also cleaned up the dust cover. Really clean. Just really, really fast with some brake parts cleaner, some purple power, and some elbow grease. So this is the gasket I got from Quadratech, it's Crown Automotive. I'll put the link in the description below to, a, uh, to the same gasket I got. And that's pretty much it. So you basically have like a, a metal gasket and then rubber on both sides. And that's just pretty much, pretty much it. Looking at the OEM gasket. Uh, it's pretty much the same exact thing. Um, obviously, maybe a little bit different of materials for the rubber. I'm not sure exactly, but I think Crown Automotive makes pretty much pretty close to OEM spec of uh, gaskets and parts. So now you want to go ahead and get your Permatex uh, RTV. Could be any brand, but Permatex is what everybody else uses. And you want to use this to put RTV in those factory positions in the four corners. And you do this under the Jeep. So you don't put it on the gasket. You don't put it on the oil pan out here. You put it on the, the crankshaft case uh, from under the Jeep. So I'll show you guys how to do that in a second. So those four positions where you need to put RTV is one, two, three, and four. So that's kind of what you want to look at right here. Those four corners as well as the top right there. There's a little ridge where you can see a gasket that is uh, in the front of the can. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the front cover and kind of cover it up right there and kind of close the gap right there as well as over here and then down here you kind of just transfer over to I think this is the rear main seal right here correct me if I'm wrong but that is the rear main seal and you want to go ahead and seal those off. Now it's time to get the gasket as well as the lower oil pan or the upper pan, or the pan assembly sorry so now you want to have those I have two bolts in hand and those two nuts that go in the front in hand as well as your 10 millimeter on a on an extension and you want to raise up that oil pan with the gasket uh, just get one of those bolts and put it through the gasket and the upper pan so they kind of stay somewhere in the same place. Damn it. Now 
Now you, I got in one bolt here, one bolt here, and now you kind of can uh, go ahead and just loosely put in the rest of the 16 bolts that go around the upper pan. So once you have all of the bolts in, as well as the nuts, you should have 16 bolts in and two nuts, no leftovers. And you want to go ahead and hand tighten these until uh, the pan is perfectly evenly tightened. So you want to kind of go over here and kind of go back and forth, side to side, up and back, until you get it evenly secured. But I do like to kind of uh, leave these a little bit loose up until so that RTV can can set up a little bit and get a little tacky and then tighten it down. So give it like five or ten minutes and then you'll be good. And then you want to torque all these down, all the bolts and, and nuts to 105 foot pounds. Alright, so I'm actually an idiot and and I accidentally was going on one of them. And remember how I said 105 foot pounds? It's actually inch pounds. So I snapped a bolt. That sucks. And uh, so now I will have to come back tomorrow and hopefully, uh, well, I'm gonna have to order another bolt and uh, that'll, that'll take a while. That'll probably take a week to come in. <sighs> God damn it. Lesson to the kids always read. Reading is very crucial and a very important part to any stroke of life. So I, I fucked up on one of them. Um, I made sure, and well, when it snapped, I, I obviously didn't keep going, but, uh, God, I'm an idiot. I don't even have an inch-pound torque wrench, so I'll just, uh, you know what, I'm just going to clean up. It's it's nighttime. I'm just going to go ahead and clean up and, and just call it a day. I've been, I've been beat. I've been beat today by my own mind. Uh, damn. Uh... Alright, so it is the second day. Um, couldn't really sleep that much last night. But, uh, so we're gonna start off by taking off the oil pan, see what damage I did. Hopefully, we can reuse that gasket. And then we're gonna start the process over again. So I got the pan off, as you guys can see right there, the bolt is broken off. Hopefully I'll focus, yeah there you go. So now I gotta take off this gasket without messing it up. Remember we put on that RTV, so I, there's rubber material, it's pretty soft right here, that I don't want to damage or else the gasket is, is, uh, is compromised. So I'm just gonna go in and try to get be really careful and get this gasket off. So here is where it broke off. As you guys can see, hopefully, there's just a little bit to grab onto. So I'm going to try to get a pair of vice locks and grab onto there and try to twist it out. Alright, I got lucky and it's coming out. Alright, so I got it out, and there it is. Broken nut, or broken bolt, sorry. Basically what happens is, when you tighten it down into a, a nut or something that's threaded, or where you thread in the bolt, the bolt stretches a little bit, and that's how everything stays tight, is the middle kind of it's friction. And whenever you tighten it down too much, the bolt snaps. And this is a perfect example of it. So I digged around my uh, box of parts and found this this bolt, and it seems like a similar a similar diameter as well as pitch. So I think this might work. I'll of course have to trim it down to size, but we have a I'll just cut it with an angle grinder or something. But first I'm going to try to test fit this. All right. Yep, works.
Here we are. Our new bolt. The uh, washer under it is a little bit big, but it shouldn't be a problem. There shouldn't be any real big clearance issues with that. So now I have to go to, I had to go to Harbor Freight to get that inch pound torque wrench so I don't mess everything up like last time. And yeah, so let's go ahead and jump in the ZJ and go to Harbor Freight. So I got a Pittsburgh Pro Click Type Torque, torque Wrench 1 4th Drive, inch pounds. This is like $20 or something. I got some socket adapters, mostly because I don't have that many 1 4th Drive sockets and I'll need a 10 millimeter in 1 4th and I don't have it. I have it in 3 8 though, so that's why I got this. This is like a few dollars. And then I got this, I had a coupon for a free one. And this is a, a magnetic parts holder, so you kind of put this on, you can put this anywhere. And it really helps like when you're disassembling anything, you can just put the, the bolts here and they won't roll around because it's magnetic and you won't lose the bolts or nuts. So really, really useful and coupon, man. So all this was like, was almost $30. And that's a really good deal on how much you're getting. It's like I live at Harbor Freight. I need to be sponsored. It's quite windy today, but we're gonna head back to the garage and get uh, the oil pan remounted up, hopefully. And uh, yeah, hopefully it should go really smoothly as long as I'm not being an idiot again. See you guys in a second. All right, so I have all the bolts in place. Remember there's 16 bolts and two nuts in the front. They're all kind of hand tightened in here. So now I got my torque wrench set to inch pounds this time. And I'm just gonna go ahead and torque them in an even matter, so I'm gonna go from this corner to that corner over there, this corner, that corner, kind of in an X pattern, as you do if you're like tightening down a head. So all of these are torqued down to 105 inch pounds. So now you wanna get your dust cover, and you should have seven bolts, all 15 millimeters. And what you need to do is start out putting them from the, the bolts that go into the transmission, there's four of them that go across the bottom. You wanna hand tighten them in, so just kind of put them in, and uh, and then there's a special way to tighten this down so it's secured in the in the correct orientation, and I'll show you guys how. All right, you want to start off with these two transmission bolts that go from the dust cover to the transmission, and you want to go to less than 25 inch pounds. So that's literally nothing, and basically what you want to do is evenly make sure this is flush to the transmission bell housing. And then after that, you start with this one. You go one, two, three, and then you work your way around evenly and torque these down to 40 foot pounds. Now, it is time to refill the oil. Make sure you put in six quarts. Um, you guys can do this repair when you're about to change the oil so it's a lot easier. But I did, I changed my oil like a few weeks ago. So I'm just gonna reuse it from the oil pan I emptied it in in the beginning of the video. Alright, that'll be the end of the video today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure uh, after filling it up with oil, you let it cycle through, you turn on the card, you let it idle for a little bit, check for any leaks, take it out of the block or something. Make sure you have those six quarts. Uh, mine was in the safe when I checked the dipstick. And yeah, so subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.